Welcome back to the channel. Time to take a look at the latest industry developments for you. There is a new order for Airbus aircraft, an expansion at WestJet, Airbus reporting their own orders and deliveries, and losses continuing at an Asian-based carrier. Beginning, though, with where you'll probably be most interested, and that is the aircraft order. Eva Air has announced a deal with Airbus to secure new planes. At list price value, the deal is worth just slightly over USD 10 billion. But if you didn't know, customers actually never pay list price value. Yes, it is a fantastic guidance and is often added to press releases, but substantial discounts will be handed down to pretty much every airline. And if you order in bulk, you can expect that discount to be even heftier. And if you have a great working relationship with the manufacturer, well, then that's another contributing factor. As part of the latest commitment, Eva Air has announced 18 A350-1000s will be joining the fleet. Specifics, though, on delivery timeframes are yet to be officially revealed for this part of the deal. And alongside the A350-1000, they've also selected the A321neo, which has very much quickly become the most in-demand narrowbody aircraft, as I'll touch on a little bit later in this video. A deal for 15 of these has been announced as part of future regional flying, and ultimately in a very similar position to the A350-1000. We don't quite have the specifics around the delivery time frame alongside the potential options that may be included for the deal. The expectation is these will come at a later date. If you're after the currently active fleet, well, Eva Air flies 85 aircraft per the latest data by Sirium. When measured by active units, the largest fleet type is actually the 777-300ER with 34 in service. When taking a look at what aircraft the A350-1000 will fill the shoes of, some would probably say it'll be the oldest 777 units, and eventually Eva Air will likely transition to utilizing the A350 as its true flagship. Away from those 777s I touched on, they do fly two variants in the 787 family, which has become a hugely important part of their next generation fleet. Over at WestJet, well, the expansion just continues at this company, as they enhance their global connectivity from Edmonton by releasing new flights. Transborder connections are the specific focus on the newest expansion efforts from Edmonton. The airline believes that the commitment of new routes that will be launching in 2024 demonstrates really the ongoing presence that they have in the city. Additionally, it does build upon previous service announcements to Minneapolis and Seattle that took place during the 2023 summer season, a season that they say was incredibly positive for them. And through an existing partnership with Delta, guests that will be moving through a newly announced Atlanta route will be able to gain access to the massive US network that Delta has at its disposal. So with that being said, I kind of already gave away the first route, but Edmonton to Atlanta will launch on April 29th of next year. This will be a daily service with the outbound flight leaving at 12.45 in the morning. It will touch down at Atlanta at 7.06 a.m., which really is the perfect time if you do want to jump on, as WestJet said, a Delta service to another destination. The return leg will leave just a couple of hours later and arrive into Edmonton at 11.50 in the morning. San Francisco will be added to the route network from June 20th from Edmonton with a five times weekly service. The Edmonton flight will leave at 11.30 in the morning before it touches down into San Francisco at 1.32, not 1.31 or 1.30, but 1.32. The flight will leave San Francisco at 2.25 before arriving into Edmonton once more at 6.25 p.m. Lastly, we'll see a twice weekly service from May the 2nd, 2024 from Edmonton to Nashville. WestJet operates a fleet of many aircraft types and has moved towards more efficient next generation planes in recent years too, with the 737 MAX making up a fundamental part of their operation. They're also awaiting the 737-7 and 737-10, which are the last two remaining variants that do need to be certified by the American plane maker. These are continuously delayed, so when this actually takes place remains to be seen, but you'd like to think we'd finally see these get the approval that they need sometime in 2024. All of this is part of WestJet's continued commitment to expanding in the market and capturing more market share. 
over at Garuda Indonesia. Well, unfortunately for them, losses continue, as the company reported a pre-tax loss of USD 103 million for the first nine months of 2023. The losses do also represent a substantial shift following the profit reported for the same period one year prior. Garuda Indonesia cites the changes in the foreign exchange rate as a critical catalyst for the company's poor performance. Despite the highlight being the loss recorded for the first nine Nine months, the airline did actually increase its operating revenue and pretty substantially too. They saw a 48% increase, which took the revenue to USD 2.23 billion. Ultimately, however, you'd have to say that the losses reported are the main focal point and what is going to stand out the most. But if you have been keeping potentially a close eye on the airline, well, then this shouldn't really come as a shock, as throughout 2023, they have been forecasting a rather negative picture. If we're taking a look at their current operational fleet, 62 aircraft do remain in service per Syria. On to the final story of today, and that does indeed sit with Airbus, who have announced their orders and delivery tally for October 2023, which, if anything, represented once more another pretty busy month. A total of 119 orders were announced by Airbus for the month from a host of customers. We had Air New Guinea, who announced a deal for the A220-100, and and everyone's favourite customer committed to 8 a 22300s that is, the undisclosed customer. Yes, I know, we have no idea at this point who ordered this aircraft, and that's always the nature of undisclosed orders. They are revealed eventually later down the line, but they have a bit of mystery surrounding them for the time being. The A320neo family was ever present, bringing up actually the majority of total orders for the month. Cathay Pacific ordered 8 A320neos, meanwhile United committed to 60 of the A321neos. We also saw Cathay Pacific order A321neo aircraft too. Airbus reported 10 A350-900 orders from also an undisclosed customer. Meanwhile, if we're taking a look at deliveries, well, they delivered 71 aircraft across 42 customers. As part of the deliveries, many aircraft programs were represented, but rather than go into the specifics of each delivery, if you'd like to find that, it is on the official DJ's Aviation website. I'd like to take a look at the delivery goal. So if you do recall, at the beginning or at the end of last year, I want to say, the plane maker said it was targeting 720 aircraft deliveries for this year. Now, remembering that in 2022, it wasn't able to hit that target. As a result of the latest deliveries for October, Airbus has managed to ship off a total of 559 planes for the first 10 months. This means, following everything from the plane maker's guidance, it would need to deliver 161 planes across the remaining two months of this year to hit the 720 target. That is what I'll leave you on. Do you believe Airbus will hit this target? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support. I do really appreciate it. Please take care and do also be safe and I'll see you next time. And we'll fly.